Welcome to the podcast that is all about the world of direct response television, Are We on the Air? I'm your host, Sean Wilsey, and for over 30 years I hosted cable shopping network television shows, and now this is the only podcast in the world dedicated to TV shopping networks, infomercials, and anything relating to direct response. We are going to continue with Marvin Siegel in just a second here. If you have not listened to part one, please go back and do that. That was the show most recently uploaded. Because you want to get caught up and figure out where we left off in the conversation because we're going to continue here. We had just had some fun talking about Joseph Siegel's lifetime achievement and uh, the dinner that almost turned into a roast. It's hilarious. Watch, watch the video. It's in my show notes from the last episode. But anyway, getting back to the serious topic at hand, which is, of course, the Q-Rate, the parent company of QVC and HSN, their numbers, and they're, in a word, horrendous. And, you know, what what's going wrong and, you know, where the blame lies and where the blame is for this. It, as a former host, I, and you being in management, I know you've, you've been on both sides, so you, you know how it goes. If something doesn't sell, the host is going to blame the buyer and the product. Whereas the buyer is going to say, well, that host wasn't prepared. There's all this finger pointing going back and forth. When you look at the QVC numbers today, is this a host issue? Is it a product issue? Is it an influencer issue or lack thereof? Where does the finger get pointed right now? I, you, you hinted at it or actually said it. When's the last time you've seen a QVC commercial? Okay. Um, you're not... You're not bringing in new eyeballs to what you're doing. Um, there used to be commercials outside of the channel. They'd be on regular cable uh, talking about shows upcoming. I have not seen one forever. Someone comes to you and says, Marvin, we're going to pay you a lot of money to help us brand QVC, to help us market QVC. What's the first thing you do? I would start to engage with influencers in specific categories to to be experts. And ironically, QVC UK actually did that. They really? had expert. Yeah, they had show hosts that were experts in specific categories. Uh, think of Elliot Smith doing electronics. Um, they actually had and I'm not making this up and this I have to laugh. Um, they had a, a spa anesthetician expert, and they were actually doing bikini waxes live on air at QVC UK. <laughs> I mean, oh, you know, uh, but they had, they had a spa expert, and they had a spa chair in the studio, and they would teach you how to do things at home. And they don't have that. Uh, they've lost that. Uh, and, and they're going in the gardening season, and Dan and, and Carol were both gardening experts, uh, you know, and they point. cut them right before a gardening season. I yeah. mean, it's just that's a no, good point. None of it. Yeah. None of it really makes any sense. I, I'm sure somewhere there was some logic to it. I don't know. Uh, but it does not seem to make sense. It doesn't seem, in my opinion, to be morally even correct in the case of Dan. Um, but um you know, I, I just don't think they uh, go back to this. I don't think not just them. I don't know that any channel really gets it. I mean, I could even pick on Gem Shopping, which, you know, Gem and JTV, if my numbers are correct, are actually still making money and yep. doing well. Yep. But you see some old guy with wrinkly hands, dirty fingernails showing a ring off rather than the model uh, that's off camera. Now, how do I know that? A group I represented almost bought Gem Shopping. Uh, so we were actually in the phone area. and But ironically, they're still selling stuff. It seems like, how do they do that? But it works. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're selling pieces that are tens of thousands of dollars. If not, I've seen pieces that were like $90,000 on air without easy pay or anything else. Um, and because they have a very unique market, uh, and that's what is working for them. You just thank you for bringing up Easy Pay because that's something I, I was note to self yesterday, reminding myself: ask about it, ask about it, ask about it. Because in the early days, the, co the cocaine of TV shopping. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Exactly. But in the early days, for those who don't know, QVC uh, was the first to do to do, do the Easy Pay thing. Three easy payments gets this twenty dollar item home or whatever it is. Um, 
and so that was one of the big hooks back then is, okay, we have easy pay. One of the big hooks in the early days was it's delivered to your home. All these hooks that now... I had to hire an attorney last year and I was able to put it in 12 payments on my American Express. You know, it's just easy pay is not a thing that that is a good enticement anymore. What what's left that TV shopping has that I can say, OMG, Amazon doesn't have this. It's unique products. It is. I have a saying. (laughs) I'm very proud of this. There was a model at New York Fashion Week that actually quoted my quote, which is what makes you different, unique, and better. Uh, I couldn't believe she actually gave me credit for that quote. Um, but, you know, what What do they really have that is unique or premiering product anymore um, at QVC? Some of it is their fault. Some of it is the fault of the industry. And I mean, not just them, the manufacturers. I mean, what's new in a computer anymore? You know, how much, how much, you know, there was a period of time, you know, I remember when Elliot Smith went on with the old Pionex computer, and I want to say did like $70 million in one day, and that yeah. was record-breaking back then yes. um, because of the speed and everything else that it offered. But what else can you really offer? I mean, I have a, uh, you know, I'm on a MacBook Pro M1 processor, which is their own chip, if you know. You know, now they came out with the M2. It can't be any quicker. I, I you know... <laughs> You know, unless this thing breaks, which has got a solid state drive, I don't think there's going to be any reason for me to buy another computer in a while. Right. Um, and I think Apple's even experiencing that when it comes to the iPhones that, not, you know, people are not upgrading quite as much because they're not breaking and they're really good. And the, and the incremental differences are very subtle. But what else can you really do? Uh, and, and what are the unique products when and I'm going to pick on my father, not just because, you know, he's not here with us anymore, but. And the genius that he did when he had Le Mirador skincare, he had a deal where it included an ingredient which was just approved by the FDA uh, to be in a product. And it launched on QVC in Le Mirador skincare. So no one else had it. And it sold that every time on air. Where's the next version of that? It's not there. Yeah. You know, they're not making those deals anymore. People used to ask me, Sean. How come I don't go to the shows? And I go, I don't want I don't want to be looking at the same thing everybody else is looking at. I want the thing that's under the table or still in the office that is going to come out in the future. I and I got that many times. I mean, I had a um a silica based cat litter. That's that little those little white pebbles that are electronic. Yes. So yes. I had a <clears throat> silica based cat litter that was brought to me by J and J on a referral. And literally you could pour pneumonia in the cat litter box, put your hand in it, hold it up, and it didn't smell. I mean, it absorbed everything. It's a pretty amazing product. Um, and, you know, that was revolutionary. But where is the next revolutionary thing? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, I could go through the products that I represented, lipo in a box, which was kind of like Spanx on steroids. Uh, a woman would drop two dress sizes. Um I could, you know, pick on trioral, the guarantee 24 hour a day of no bad breath. I mean, the research done by New York State University, these were really amazing products in their day. Um, Light Bites, obviously, you know, was an icon there. Um, But the point is, where's the next version of that stuff? You know, and as much as, you know, QVC is like doing food now more than they're Mm -hmm. doing Anything else, no different than Shop HQ is doing watches. They just keep going back to what's really working. Right. It seems. Yeah. You know. Um, I was just I posted on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. I was watching QVC, and they were selling Skechers, and they had someone giving a testimony about how it was good for her diabetic feet or whatever it was. And it just it dawned on me. I bought my first pair of Skechers in 1996 because Howard Stern was advertising them. I mean, that was new and different and everybody, wow, I got to get a pair of Skechers. Howard's advertising them. And now they're everywhere. They're in every mall, every outlet mall. And your customer base is, well, my age. <laughs> it's so it, 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 it's where's the next Skechers, I think, is your point. Where, where's that next revolutionary brand? Well, well, think about that. I mean, and whether it was advertising or whether it was a true endorsement, I mean, Howard Stern did Skechers. He did the, uh, 
uh, Tommy John underwear, which I started wearing because I read about, you know, I mean, I, he kept talking about it. I was like, oh, let me buy a pair. And it was like, I like them. Snapple. Um, I, I had never and, had Snapple till yeah. hard. Yeah. Right. And, but that's, that was, that was the basics of influencer marketing. That's a good point. Uh, when he was doing it back then. And it, it works. Yeah. I mean, it's a proven a thing point. that, that shopping channels are not getting just across the board. They don't, they don't get it. You know, I, I want to look towards the, the, the direction that selling on television, putting television in air quotes is going to take. And I'm, I'm going to make, Reference back, I have in front of me right now an article from Broadcasting Magazine. This is September 1st, 1986. They had done a 10-page spread about this new industry, TV shopping. QVC wasn't even on the air yet. And they were quoting a bunch of different people who were getting involved in the industry. And a gentleman by the name of Walter Forbes, who most people have probably never heard of, he started CompuCard in the 70s which was kind of ahead of a time. its time. It was a way to get people to shop at home, and they started all these, you know, air travel discounts and all these different services, but he was getting involved in a TV shopping network. And I want, listen to what he said in 1986 about the future of the TV shopping industry. He's quoting him, we will see an evolution to some sort of device in the home that sells interactively with pictures. I don't think in the long run it will be cable. In 1986, he's already saying, yeah, this is a great idea, but it's not the future. So aren't we at that point now officially? Oh, you totally. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's mostly on the mobile phone. Uh, you know, you uh, when 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 my department got cut and I was laid off at uh, Shop NBC, I remember sitting at a coffee meeting with a TV sales manager. And I was talking about my vision for the future back then which is uh, the term I now use, you know, content-based shopping. And I didn't think she was really listening while the two of us were talking. And at the very end, she says, you know, I have never watched TV shopping. And meanwhile, her boyfriend, it, you know, who's now, I think they're married, uh, you know, was a TV sales manager. Uh, she says, I, you know, I never bought anything from TV. And then she holds up her phone and she goes, but I just bought this. And she bought a dress while we were talking from her phone, from an wow. influencer. And, uh, you know, and that was 20 years ago. And, but, but again, TV shop, when you think even the model, you know, we are now all streaming. We, you know, you know, on the weekend, my wife and I'll say, what do we want to watch? And we go, it's not that we're watching live. We're, you know, what show do we want to watch? What just came out that is uh, something we want to uh, watch a you know a series of, and we watch what we want to watch when we want to watch it. However, TV shopping is still basically saying we're selling uh, Cracker Factory now, and you have to basically watch now if you want to see the live presentation. It's so antiquated to basically how the world is right now. That's something else Walter Forbes brought up in in the in his little interview here was his company had 2,500 items up for sale or whatever it was. And he said on a TV shopping network, you can see nine to 10 items at a time. And so even back then, he was already saying this is just this is not long term how it's going to work. By the way, Walter wound up in jail for accounting fraud or something. So, you know, not a happy <laughs> ending to his story, but the man was thinking right, right. ahead. Um, and getting along to to your point here, because it's we, we've said it before, QVC, they had the infrastructure. They should have been Amazon before Amazon was Amazon. It's just, but the history books are closed on that. So what do they, do they scale back on the cable? Do they strictly look for the apps because they're big now pushing their, their, their apps? It's just, what do they do? So they're not now the history book written on that saying, well, remember when there used to be a TV shopping network? Is it, what is their their broadcast step? Is it cable? Is it simply on a phone? What is it? If you and I, in my opinion, we're going to start TV shopping today, we wouldn't be on TV. You got that right. We'd be on YouTube. Yeah, You're right. We'd be on YouTube, Facebook, and it would be influencer content based. Yeah. So right away, we'd probably save $100 million a year yeah. in carriage fees because um, that's how much each, each one of them is basically spending. And that would be how we would do it. Yeah. And it would be when you see this next video, 
Um, I mean, the current one is on on the website for Emergent Health, uh, but we have another one coming out that's even more robust than uh, what's up there now. With a and here to give credibility to a woman, uh, Jessica D. Louise, who is her persona is the wellness kitchenista. She has a degree from Tulane University in culinary medicine. So it's food as medicine. Think about that. Um, and she's teaching you how to eat healthy with regular food. Uh, we took a we took an influencer's pasta sauce and kind of juiced it up with pureed cauliflower, zucchini, stuff like that, uh, putting in probiotics into it, you know, which people you can't even taste, but it's good for you. People know the term probiotics. And, but again, it's very credible because you have somebody who's truly an expert in that category speaking about it. And then you have two food influencers at her kitchen table with her. I mean, and they're all Italian, which was hysterical. So they're all, it was like a, it was like an Italian game show on different Italian terms. It was pretty funny. Um, but there's, and that's, I know I bring that up. There used to be a time when TV shopping was fun. Yeah. I go, I go back to, um, when QVC was live in the overnights, they would do a thing from, I think it was two in the morning till 6 a.m. I want to say once a week or once a month where they encourage the on-air guests to wear silk pajamas and they would put everybody's product name in a basket. You'd pull it a thing out and then you had to do that person's product. So I remember I was doing, I was doing Joy Mangano's like roll up thing. Um, and it was hysterical yeah. and the viewers loved it. It was fun. Oh, Linda Ellerby did a great interview um, about, for those that don't know, she was a famous journalist. I think she's still with us. And she used to do a show on NBC overnights. And it was a, I think it was called NBC News Overnight. And she always equated it to NBC basically let them be the inmates running the asylum. And it was a brilliant show. Obviously, right. you know, it ran out of steam after a couple of years, but that's the power when, you, when you're doing overnights, because I did them a lot of years myself, you can do those quirky things and get away with it, and the audience follows you. And now yeah. it's all on videotape and, you know, whatever it is. Um, but but even, I, even put, the, put the videotape aside, I don't mean to interrupt you, yeah. it's, they just, they don't encourage you having fun anymore. Right. Everything's got to be so regimented. You know, you, you don't have a chance to just enjoy yourself. And, you know, I used to have the big cut out of me. We used to call it Big Marv. Um, and it was like a cut out of me when I weighed 330 pounds. Or when I was on air, and I have this on videotape somewhere, when uh, Harvey Corman and and Tim Tim Conway oh were gosh. doing the, the, remember the Dwarf series? Yes. You know, Dwarf Goes Fishing, Dwarf yes. Goes Hunting. So they were selling it on QVC. Well, every single cell leading up to when they were on air for their one hour show, if they were doing betting under the comforter was Harvey. <laughs> and, oh, and, you know, I, no, it was probably. So I'm doing light bites and my large jacket and pants were on a stool always right next to me to like my left. The show starts. I did the thing where I broke the bar open and I go to hold up my large pants and I like, go, oh, my pants aren't here. Um, and I you know you're live. I said, if anybody knows where my pants jacket are, you know, let me know. Next thing I hear, like laughter coming from stage left. And here comes, you know, Harvey and, and they're walking on the set. And Tim Conway is wearing my large pants. Uh, and oh as they walk onto the set, they're eating a light bite bar. And I couldn't believe this. And Tim Conway lets go of the pants and he's in his boxer shorts <laughs> live on air. I mean, oh my classic, Lord. great TV. Yeah. Who's not watching you know? that? I mean, let that right. sink but, in. Harvey Corman and Tim Conway are on QVC. What? Yep. That just, that's mind boggling to think about versus what they're doing today. Um, I don't want to get. Yeah. I mean, I, I had through time life, I had the best of the Carol Burnett show. Uh, because I know those guys uh, from from Time Life, uh, we had Vicki Lawrence come on air, and while she was live on air, Tim Conway called in. Mm. I mean, that's great TV. Oh, that's great. You know, priceless TV. Yes, right. And but no one does that anymore. 
No, you no, they don't. Um, I, I I do want to get back to what you're doing now, however, because Marvin's always up to something interesting. So we we gotta let everybody know what you have going on right now. So we we're doing what I call a a, a roll up of about five. Actually, it's, I think it's up to seven or eight companies right now under the Emergent Health Company, uh, and it, it is a collection of regenerative health products in the human and pet space. Uh, from the basics of, believe it or not, there's about 400 drugs out there that have a plant-based origin. So these are going to be natural. Uh, many of them are actually classified as grass, generally recognized as safe, G-R-A-S. And uh, the website is live. The video I mentioned, one of the videos is up live, and there's a lot of content up there. And we just filmed uh, last week, which I don't know any companies really doing, actually getting back to what we're talking about with TV shopping. What's that? So we're we we having our CEO do what's called a month in review. So rather than making any forecast, he's sitting at a desk, and we're going to take him around the city of New York. Uh, we're going to put him at the Carnegie Club Cigar Bar, et cetera, and he's going to be talking to you, you know, looking straight into the camera and telling you what happened this past month and 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 why it worked or why it didn't work. Uh, kind of a retrospective. And we just we just uh, put up our first one. It's on the website called the Month in Review. Um, and I'm very proud about that. I'm very proud of our CEO, who's a friend and business friend. Uh, it's Jim Morrison, who is the past president of L'Oreal US. Mm. So we've got some great DNA. We have a new board member, uh, Charlie McMinnman, who is a former executive of Kraft Foods. He's a retail dynamo. Uh, so the combination of all these people coming together, uh, I feel very good about it. And we're going to have a bar. I can't believe I'm saying this. That I'm going to be involved with a bar again, but it will not be a weight loss bar. It'll be a very healthy bar uh, to support you. You know, it's a food product, but it'll have ingredients in it that will be that will support good health. Right. All clinically proven, by the way. Um, so, I mean, that's the kind of stuff we're doing. Along with the, when when you go to the website, you'll see things and again in the regenerative health space, wound healing, men's health, uh, really good stuff. I'll make sure to link all of this so everybody can find it. Uh, but just for anyone who's not clicking the links at the moment, where can they find all of this? Well, the the main link for Emergent Health is uh, obviously www.emergenthealthcompany.com. That would get you to the main website right now. We're not really selling product yet. Um, we have a, a couple of companies that are direct to doctor. The direct to consumer products are in development right now. And the company that will be doing that is the holistic company. And it's holistic with a W. Why is that important? When you look it up, the rather than the H-O-L, the W-H-O-L spelling refers to treating the whole body. And that's what our products are going to be about. So uh, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of the branding. We hired the same company, did the branding for Google to create our logo and our branding and our packaging. And there's a lot of really good stuff coming. By the way, for anybody that's wondering what ever happened, because Marvin and I used to discuss a TV show called America's Big Deal. It seemed to just vanish, Marvin. No one's, no one's heard of words of that well, sense. You know, sadly, and you and I talked about it, we, we almost played like Monday morning quarterback yeah, after each airing. I know. Um, you know, in a one hour show, I think the top item did maybe seventeen thousand dollars or something like that. And I think sadly, if you remember, I believe the first two episodes, the vendor that won didn't even pick QVC. That's right. They picked either Lowe's or Macy's. So I mean, it almost proved that QVC was not relevant anymore. Yeah. Uh now it, they they twisted that and it got it got a little better as they went forward. But I mean it just it's sad. I mean, I don't even know what my father would be thinking if he were alive now. Uh, but I mean, it's just, it's really amazing, especially when you go back and you watch the, uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award at the ERA and you hear his comments. Uh, it, it's, it's sad when you think about how they used to treat vendors. He was very proud of that. Um, he, he really acknowledged that vendors were the backbone of QVC and they, you know, and I think across many of the channels right now, vendors are just an afterthought now. They they use them up as quickly as they get them. 
I just I, I keep trying to wrap this up, but more things keep coming to mind. And you just mentioned Macy's because again, we talk about relevance. The day after QVC's numbers came out, Macy's numbers came out. Now Macy was a Macy's was a company that two years ago their stock was at about four dollars a share. There and I don't have it in front of me, but I think they're flirting with twenty something now. So they've done one hell of a turnaround. And even yep. though their sales were down, they beat in earnings per share. How is Macy's able to, because people were saying two years ago, Macy's, it's outdated, that's it, goodbye, you know, because JCPenney, Sears, all these, it's Macy's is going to have the same fate. How are they staying relevant? I would say they're relevant because of the, all the things they do that have nothing directly to do with product. I mean, the, the Thanksgiving Day Parade, uh, July 4th, I mean, those are things that are great branding exercises for that company. Um, and they're now partnering. Isn't Toys R Us and Macy's now? I think yes, I right. think. Uh, yeah. I mean, so they're doing things like that. And I think that will be the future where Macy's, Macy's, especially in New York, may look more like an indoor mall with various other kiosks in there from other vendors. Uh, but they did it really well. And if you were to make that comparison and you can look it up after we're done, I think a year ago, QVC had a market cap of four or four or five billion. And I think now it's like 600 million. I mean, it, it's devastating yeah. uh, what has happened to that company uh, it, and how much in debt they are. And, you know, they, what I what looks looks like de desperation or maybe desperation. They've sold off everything they own. That's true. They don't That's even right. own their headquarters anymore, yeah. you know. That's right. Yeah. For those that, that don't know, they, yeah, they're renting everything back. They've sold almost all their buildings and all their land. Um, Marvin, it's always a pleasure. I always learn things, and these shows go so very, very quickly. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time. I, I texted Marvin a few nights ago after the QBC numbers came out and said, I can't do this show. I don't want to do this again. Just please, I'm begging Marvin, come on with me. And he was nice enough to say, when do you need me? And and so I, I appreciate that so much that, that you were so kind. It's, 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 it's with pleasure. I wish we could talk about other things. Yeah. Um, but I don't, and you and I predicted this, I think a year and a half ago, yeah. when we did some of the first shows yeah. that I, I questioned whether QVC was going to be able to make the pivot. Uh, and I think history is now proving that they're not making the pivot at all right now. Yeah. I, I, I'm afraid so. Conversation certainly will continue. I'm sure this is not the last time that we're going to be doing this, but again, Marvin Siegel, thank you so much. Thank you. And in addition to thanking Marvin, I want to thank all of you for listening to this latest edition of Are We On The Air, the podcast all about the world of direct response marketing, especially on television, but uh, internet as well as we grow that discussion as well. Hey, listen, please check me out on Instagram and Twitter. I've said goodbye to Facebook, so forget about that, but Instagram and Twitter, you can still find me. And please spread the word about the podcast. My name is Sean Wilsey, S-H-A-W-N-W-I-L-S-I-E, so search me out on social media, please. This has been a King Bobby production. Yes, I know, Travis. That's why we give such bargains. <laughs> <laughs>